Hello again, this is John Bush, and don't make the mistake that you think this is Julia Childs because we have this out here, but we're going to cover cleaning. Now first off, I want to show you a box of how a lot of times parts come in. They're dirty. These are not somebody's safe queen. This is stuff that's been on the floor, been in the dirt, shallow water storage, all the bad ways that things are done. But we need to sell this stuff or else we can't continue to you know, buy toys and have fun. So when we get a part, we're going to look at it, we're going to decide what's the best way to do. If it's a small part that's too small to use an SOS pad on or something like that, we got a little ultrasonic cleaner. And this is a little ultrasonic cleaner because what are we doing? Maybe a hammer, triggers, things like that. Just fill it up and run it. Now what do we run in it? Now, that's a good question. Now, you can get things, products like Oil Eater. If you really flush, you can get the Brownells stuff uh, and you run it diluted. The Oil Eater is uh, available sometimes at Costco. Uh, most auto parts stores have it. Uh, we buy it in five gallon buckets and dilute it and it works good. It's not really bad on the environment. You know, it's not bad on you, but you want to rinse, okay? Just like dishes, you want to rinse. So we run it through the, the ultrasonic cleaner. It comes out. Then what are you going to do with it? You're going to dry it? It's wet? No. This is, I hate to say a secret, but you know, crock pots. Crock pots are great because they never get anything too hot. Fire danger is really low if you're careful what kind of fluid you run. But what kind of fluid do you run? Well, we use spindle oil. Now, a lot of guys, it's about the, this is 10 weight. You can get it all the way up to 30. But we use the 10 weight because it drains. When it's warm, it drains off, and you don't have to do a lot of wiping. And anytime you got to do hand labor, you all know, that's money. And if you don't have to spend it, it goes in your pocket. So we use spindle oil. Now, what's spindle oil? Well, kind of the name tells you. It's oil, and it's for spindles, which rotating things like mills, lays, stuff like that. And it has no additives like cutting oil. It's got sulfur and other stuff. It's got a high flash point, which makes it safer to use. It smells nice. Actually, it's nice oil. And you might think, that looks like three-in-one oil. And you ladies out there might say, well, that looks like my Singer sewing machine oil. And you would be right. That's just about what it is. Only when you buy it in the five-gallon bucket, it ain't $800,000. It's reasonably priced oil. Now we run it in the crock pot at a medium heat. Now what we mean by that, since the temperature of these things are not all the same, what you want is when that part comes out, you don't want to hold it. It won't blister you, but if you keep it in your hand, it becomes way uncomfortable. Then you can set it out on a screen, paper towel, towel, shop cloth. It drains off nice because it's thin to begin with. You got it heated so it's going to drain even faster. Now, how long do you have to leave it in? It depends. If you're just doing a simple cleaning job where you want it to look like something that hasn't been neglected, but just been nice, even loving wear, you know, till it gets hot. Now, the secret also of this machine is you got a part, won't come apart. You've pounded, you've beaten. You put it in a hot oil, heat it up, cool it down, a couple of cycles like that. It's amazing how parts then come apart. And we've managed to save a lot of things. When you have that choice of, well, I'm gonna work on the cheaper part. Well, some cases there's no cheaper part. You gotta save both of those things. So if you put them in the hot oil, it eventually penetrates much better than just plain penetrating oil. The heat, the cooling, the heat, the cooling makes it nice. And then you can take it apart. Now, bigger parts, my favorite is SOS pads. Now, you've all got SOS pads, and if you keep the supply in the kitchen where your wife doesn't run out, you won't have any enemies. Here's an old infield receiver. It's got a lot of cake, dirt, dust, debris on it. So alone, I wouldn't just put it in an ultrasonic cleaner. I'd SOS it, rinse it in water, and then put it in. We obviously have a bigger ultrasonic for stuff like this. And then it's nice and clean. The guy can read the markings. You throw it on a table at a gun show. Or somebody comes in, 
I split my infield receiver, but I love this rifle. Is there any way you can save it? Yeah, I got a receiver sitting on the shelf just for you. Now you may ask why SOS pads? I personally like them because it's finer than 4 aught steel wool. The soap is a really good soap that floats a lot of the dirt away. You use it with plenty of water and you're not abrading the surface. You're taking off what's not part of the original item. It might be dirt, dust, little light rust, and that SOS rinses clean. You gotta rinse it clean because that blue debris in a corner is not attractive <laughs> when you got it and you're handing it to a guy to take a look at it and say, you want this? And, well, it's all this crap in the corners. So you wanna rinse it good, put it in your ultrasonic, or if you've got a different system for uh, heating up uh, like caustic and stuff like that prior to bluing, that'll work too. But it really is nice. Now to show you, I got two bolts here. They're both infield bolts. Here's an infield bolt, just as it came out of the big parts boxes. It's grubby, looks dirty, couldn't get much money for it. You know, and after all, I'm a parts guy. I sell this stuff. Now this one happens to have a hollow bolt handle for it's the jungle carbine. Helps the value. But in this condition, that's not the case. So when we take and we SOS it, ultrasonic clean it, looks good. Now this one you'll notice is a solid bolt handle, so it's not for the number five, it's for the number number four. But you know, looks clean, you can sell it, and that's what you can do to all those parts that you wonder, how am I gonna clean it? How am I gonna make this sellable? If you clean it, it's well worth your time, it makes a nicer product, and it doesn't get your parts stores dirty either. <laughs> it's John Bush, we'll see you next time.